Welcome. Today I want to show you more details about our C64 music workstation. I have worked on this machine for two years now to make it perfect. I will compose a new song using the Messiah software. I will mix the tracks, add some FX and elements and all this only using the workstation. But before we start, let me tell you more about the details. Basically what you see here is a Commodore 64C from 1986 with a 9 inch TFT display attached. As I got this machine, the color of the housing was in a really bad condition, so I repainted it in a silver metal style. This C64 contains a lot of extras. On the right side we have the SD2 IEC drive. This drive will replace the 1541 disk drive of the C64. You can store programs and disk images like this disk here on the attached SD card and I will use it mainly to store music and instruments I create with the Messiah software. This is another display here, it's a status display for the SD2 IEC drive. Here you can see which disk image is actually loaded and the status of the drive. The disk images can be changed by pressing one of these two buttons. On the right side we have also the power connector for the C64 and there's a second power connector for all the remaining hardware I have installed here, like the TFT display for instance. On the top you see two of the four installed encoders. These are used by different music programs to control synthesizer parameters like cutoff, resonance or amplitude and the Messiah cartridge take a lot of use of it. On the other side of the machine you see the second pair of encoders. Also on top there's a reset button and the next two switches are the configuration switches for the ZFX module. The ZFX module is another extra I installed inside the workstation. It contains two SID chips giving you six synth voices instead of three. The next part is a little bit unusual for a C64. This is a USB 3 hub and this is for the mini PC which is also installed in this machine. What you see here is a DC converter for the mini PC. In the beginning I had used this guy here but it's only 3 amps which was not enough for the mini PC which caused many problems like it randomly switched off or showing me blue screens. So I had to get a new one and this one is really working great. This is the AV output port of the C64 which is still working very great, especially when you attach an SVU cable to it. Of course it's the same with the serial port. You can still attach a real 1541 disk drive if you like and also of course a dataset. These two 6.3 audio jacks are the physical outputs of the both SID chips. So the left side is SID1 and the right side is SID2. These are the raw audio output of the SIDs which can be connected to an external mixer. This is the external audio interface for the mini PC which is internally connected to both outputs of the SID chips. It contains an optical output, an output for the headphones, a volume slider and also an external mixer can be connected via Chinch on the opposite side of the interface. This is a Windows 10 mini PC I used to record the C64 voices, mix them with effects and rearrange them with a sequencer software running in Windows. The stick PCs are very powerful machines and also works great for retro gaming. Next to the PC is a video capture card. This brings a live C64 video screen to the Windows desktop. This is a reset button for the SD2 IEC drive. The next switch turns the SD2 IEC drive on and off. This can be useful if you want to use a real 5041 drive or a cartridge like the 5041 Ultimate. The last switch turns the four encoders on and off. This is necessary if you want to use a mouse in the Messiah sequencer. Stored below the C64 is a wireless keyboard with mousepad. This keyboard you need for the mini PC. In this case it's not a good idea to use the C64 keyboard for both computers at the same time. Also at the bottom you will find a low profile MIDI keyboard. Let's take a look inside the machine. Beginning on the upper right side 
we see the back side of the first two encoders, the SD2 IEC drive, the SIDFX module and the two 6.3 output jacks. Let's put the machine back together. Now, after I connected the power cables, the MIDI keyboard and the mouse, I am ready to go and start composing. So let's turn on the C64 and the display. This is a Messiah welcome screen. The SD2 IEC drive is also ready and waiting for a disk image, which now I will choose. The Messiah package contains many music tools, but for this video I will only use the sequencer. The sequencer is a music application similar to Cubase or Logic. Before I start an own composition, let's load the demo first and see if all is working correctly. It's playing. And it also uses the second set installed. If it's I switch it off, you hear some voice are missing. Okay, let's switch to the Windows desktop. At first I have to bring back the C64 live picture on the desktop. Now I have to start Cubase 2. This is a preset I've loaded in Cubase where all the hardware is set up correctly. Audio track 1 is the raw audio coming from SID number 1 of the C64 and audio track 2 is the same for SID number 2. Let's listen to the demo again. For the beginning, let's start a basic recording of the both SID chips using the demo tune. Let's play back the tune again, but this time the recording. Because I set the panorama of SID1 slightly to the left and SID2 slightly to the right, it gives the tune a nice stereo panorama. Now we will create a complete new song, so we delete the audio files we just recorded and also start a new song in the Messiah sequencer. Let's begin and play a few notes live on the MIDI keyboard. At first we have to choose an instrument from the audio menu. Now we have to create an instrument or choose a preset from the preset browser. The C64 Lead 2 is now loaded as instrument 1. Now we have to choose MIDI mode from the functions menu. The instrument can be played mono or polyphonic. Let's start with monophonic. In monophonic mode, there's a slide effect when you play two notes at once. In polyphonic modes, you are able to play chords. With this method, it is very easy to use the C64 in a live performance. But now, back to our new composition. With the Messiah Sequencer, you can compose a song within 6 tracks. Each track represents a SID channel and different instruments within a SID channel can be used. At first, we have to create a pattern in track 1, this is SID channel 1, to record notes in. A pattern can be up to 8 bars. But for the beginning, one bar should be enough. 
Let's start with the bus instrument from the preset browser. Now we enter the pattern by double click. Let's draw the bus line. In the next step, let's add a few more instruments. I will speed up the process a little bit. The next one is a bass drum with hi-hat and snare. Now let's put in a fast arpeggio. And at last, a melody instrument. Let's listen to the finished composition. Next step is to record each single voice as an audio file in Cubase. Also, I will add a few VSC instruments and put in some reverb and delay effects. Let's start recording the drums. Ok, I copied it for a few bars and now I will check if it's in sync with the host tempo. And like before, I will speed up the rest of the recordings. This is a composition after all audio tracks were recorded in Cubase. Ok, now I'm finished of adding VST instruments and tuning the FX of the song. It's time to do a A to B comparison. At first you hear the original Messiah song coming directly from the Commodore 64 and afterwards the Cubase version of the song. Now, the Cubase version. You see, the C64 Music Workstation is a very good machine to record 
or compose songs with a SID chip, along with FX and other instruments. If you like to know more about the Music Workstation, please leave a comment. And if you like, you're welcome to subscribe to our channel. My name is Anthony and thanks for watching. Until next time.